So this video is kicking off a short series on working with an old, a 20 year old 8-bit microcontroller from Motorola, uh, now part of NXP. This processor is part of this family, uh, this HCS08. And as I get into this, uh, to the left here, I have the data sheet and it talks about it is a 40 megahertz processor. And as I continue down and I get into the actual microcontroller, I'll be using this uh, MC9S08 and I'm going to be using the GT and I'll talk about the specific model here in just a minute. Uh, but when I get into this series of microcontrollers, you know, they have onboard flash memory and RAM and you know, a bunch of other functionality here that looks pretty interesting. And I'm picking this just because I picked up these uh, chips, they were very inexpensive, something I can tinker around with and I'm really not too worried about, you know, if I, if I destroy some of these along the way or, you know, there really isn't much cost involved as far as building out some little prototype boards and things like that. And there's a lot of concepts here that I haven't worked with. So I think just going through this list, if I can just build up some knowledge, I can then maybe apply that later to a 32-bit microcontroller and uh, just kind of keep building up what I what I'm able to do with some of these things. As I scroll down here, this is closer to the uh, specific device I'm using. So it's a GT32. I'm using the 44 pin QFP package. That's going to give me 36 I/O channels, 32k of flash, 2k of RAM, um, some TPM uh, channels, basically timers, etc. And this diagram here kind of shows the block diagram. So you know, there's there's a lot to this and you can read through this or if you want to go out and, and pull up the data sheet for this, you can just uh, Google that specific model, uh, this MC9S08 and uh, look for the data sheet there. Uh, for my 44 pin package, some of these pins aren't available and they're denoted down here just saying that anything with a circle or a filled in square are not available on the, the specific package that I'm using. And if I keep on going, they talk about the system clock distribution and okay, that's great, but I'm going to keep flying through this, get down to the physical package I'm going to be working with, which is this. And so this is this GT. And I can see, I can look around, there's my 44 pins working the, the way around this. And you can see there's things like reset and there's a different uh, power ground, et cetera. And then a whole bunch of IO pins that many of them serve multiple purposes. And they provide this graphic and this is what I'm starting with. So for me to start working with these chips, there, there was maybe other packages. Uh, if I scroll up, you know, maybe there is a different style of a package out there. Uh, this is an S dip. Maybe I could work with those, but you know, nothing that's just really breadboard friendly. I, I'm pretty sure this S dip is still a surface mount dip. So I need to somehow get my 44 pin package, this TQFP or QFP, sorry, not TQFP, into something I can work with. But they show that you know, you have all these ports uh, depending on which package you're using. But then there's a bunch of other recommended. How do you connect up the the power and the ground? And and uh, this is here is a programming port or a debug slash programming port. Uh, there's some optional. You know, if you're going to use an external crystal, this piece of the schematic here. Uh, there's a reset and maybe a switch to go with that. There's a line coming in for interrupts, etc. So that's what I've done off here to the right. And if I just simply make this a bit larger, uh, we could take a quick look at what have I laid out in the schematic here. Uh, so first of all, I have a, a simple regulator. This is going to give me my 3.3 three volt. And this is an actual 3 volt is what they listed as a 3 volt part. But according to the data sheet, I'm, I should be safe up to 3.8 volt. And I have a bunch of these HT7333, they're LDO regulators, and I've got a bunch of those on hand from a previous project. So I'm just going to use one of those. I have a screw terminal and a pin header for bringing in a 5 volt. And then I will come out of that with my 3.3 volt, which I'll treat as VCC throughout this schematic. And then a pin header that lets me tap into that if I want to. I have an LED showing me if I've got 5 volt. I have another LED showing me if I've got my 3.3 uh, volt coming through. I have some standoffs. I've got the chip itself, of course, right here. 
uh, with the appropriate you know capacitors uh, based on this other data sheet I was looking at. Uh, up to the upper right, this is a small debug programming port along with a reset switch tied into that so that I can reset this. I took three of the outputs here or three of the port uh, pins and tied them to uh, LEDs so that if I want to just simply program output to those three, I can light up some LEDs. So the very first thing I'll try to do in a program that I write for it is just to see if I can do that. Can I get, can I get this you know, physically working? Can I get it programmed? And can I have that program run these LEDs through some sequence or something like that? So that would be my first uh, kind of baby steps to try to do. I do have some headers for VCC and ground so that if I do try to connect in some some devices to this. Uh, I, I have a nice uh, place just to pull the 3 3 volt from. Uh, and I will have to get used to 3 3 volt, you know, accessories or components here instead of the 5 volt or just pay attention to where I traditionally have been all 5 volt and now I'm starting to do 3 3 volt. So I'm sure I'll have some attention I'm going to need to pay to that as I go. And then I just have a bunch of headers that I've placed. And so when I look at the schematic or the, the PCB layout from that schematic, you know, this is what it, it looks like. And I'll just maybe flip over to the 3D view. That's probably easier to look at. I did go with a four layer board for this. So an inner VCC, inner ground plane. This here, you can see all those components I laid out. So again, a five volt power, three, three volt power. Uh, reset switch, my regulator to go from 5 to 3, 3. Uh, three LEDs that are just tied into some I.O. pins that I can try to manipulate, my little programming slash debug port, and then I've got a VCC and ground uh, set of headers, and then all the other headers, which I've you know tried to label so that I remember where, where different things are. And on these, I did surround all of the signals with a pair of grounds. So there's a ground as pin 1 and pin 10 here. And then in between would be, like in this case, uh, this port B, pin 7 down to pin 0. And you can see I just kind of went around this whole thing for that. I did go as much surface mount as possible. So I'm not doing surface mount pin headers uh, or this regulator, but pretty much everything else is surface mount. Um, Power, of course, isn't a service mount. I don't have service mount buttons to use, so I'm just using what I have handy. And then on the back, I do have some capacitors underneath uh, this microcontroller. But that's it. So quick video just showing that this is what I'm starting with. Uh, I am going to probably order this up maybe in a week or so. I have some other PCBs I'm working on, just little utility PCBs, and I'll probably just put in an order for everything at once. Uh, just to, to save on shipping costs. So maybe then in January I'll get this in. I'll try to get this populated and we'll come back with a follow-up video of, you know, can I get can I get it A assembled and then can I get some program built for it and loaded on it and running to, to do something with these three LEDs. Now size-wise this is a pretty small board and so if I go into fabrication it just shows me real quickly but it's a 72 and a half millimeter by 39 millimeter. So that's about three inches by an inch and a half. Pretty small, but something I can easily uh, take and build that out and have this uh, small little utility PCB to, to learn about these uh, microcontrollers. And as far as cost, you know, the boards, you know, five of these four layer boards is a couple dollars US. You know, the bulk of this, $20 of this is shipping. So that's hence why I want to get some of these other projects all uh, ordered up at the same time so that I can benefit from reduced shipping fees as I go here. Uh, if you have any uh, thoughts on this, feel free to drop a note below, but uh, look for some, some type of follow-up uh, later in January.